and the NRA is going on offense against the president's call for gun laws while refusing to back down from its controversial web ad that focused on the Obama daughters and their school. Many people feel that, that ad crossed a line, an important line. And one of those is Susan Eisenhower, who was protected by the Secret Service when her grandfather was in the White House. It's great to see you, Susan. Nice Thank to you see very you much. Here. Now, you and your brother David were in the White House as grandchildren. In fact, not very widely known. In fact, Camp David was named after David. That's correct. By your grandfather. So tell me about uh, your objection to the web video and why you think that the NRA went too far by suggesting that the Obama daughters somehow, you know, have uh, security and have benefits that are not available to others. Well, Andrew, let me say very quickly, I've had a 30-year career in international security and arms control and energy security, but this gun control thing is, is a really tough issue. And it's tough because it's emotional. Uh, what the NRA uh, has done is to make it even more emotional uh, by bringing in ancillary arguments about the elite and how well-protected they are, uh, suggesting that everyone else is not. I felt I had to sort of depart from my normal activities and, and write uh, something about this because, uh, first of all, uh, presidential children and grandchildren uh, who have protection uh, are in a very different category than ordinary kids, regrettably. Uh, they are an extension of the president himself and are targets. Uh, as, so to suggest that the population as a whole is somehow similar to uh, one of the Obama children just isn't fair or right. You wrote in this Washington Post op-ed, which caught my eye, how lucky is it to grow up with a loss of privacy and freedom along with the psychological effects of a childhood shadowed by armed bodyguards. As sensitive, respectful, and kind as these agents are, having Secret Service protection is part of the sacrifice that presidential families make in the names of public service. Those who have had armed protection can suffer lifelong feelings of physical vulnerability, a sense that he or she is always being watched watched or longing for the feeling of continued dependency and security. I am fortunate to have gotten over these issues. But you're making the point that uh, this is a privilege to serve, but there are also some burdens that come with living in that bubble. Oh, I think there are burdens. And the other thing I didn't say, because I had many other points I wanted to make in that piece, is uh, then one day they're gone. And you're still a quasi-target in a way because people may or may not hold resentments, but people certainly know who you are. But then you don't have any protection anymore. Uh, and so it really is a very uh, unique set of circumstances, and are, it's an inappropriate comparison. Uh, what it does is it's designed to create um, uh, animosity in the population. It's designed to create resentment against uh, the president. Uh, when the president is in a, you know, is uh, tasked with uh, being the, you know, in a, uh, the chief of the executive branch of the government, this is entirely different than uh, people who lead ordinary um, lives. And it also brings attention, you would argue, to the children at the very time when we are trying to avoid, other than at inaugurals and you know moments like that where they're on the public stage, but there's an unwritten agreement to stay away from the kids and to let them have their soccer matches in their schools and to stay as far away as possible and let them grow up as normal children. I think this is really important. You know, we talk about how we value freedom. Even the NRA talks about their freedom, but nobody talks about the people who sacrifice theirs for the public good. And that is certainly the case of uh, any first family or even uh, families of members of Congress or others who serve their government. And so I think we really have to put all that aside and talk about the real issues that are at play here. Susan Eisenhower with a unique perspective. Thank you very much. Thanks for sharing.